Hello, and welcome back to Dorfus. I'm Dorfus, and uh, this is more high vision content. I'll be honest with you, I, I really did not expect uh, my previous video about the high vision staged in my uh, dank and cluttered garage to uh, do particularly well. Uh, if I'd known so many people were going to see uh, that video, I, I probably would have moved that television into my office, uh, as, as I've done here in this video. And, you know, ultimately, this video is, is sort of designed to address the, uh, the main questions and comments that I got on the previous video. A, a lot of people uh, who are really into CRT televisions really want to imagine a world in which uh, we use them uh, today still as our primary displays, kind of going back to something that was uh, the pinnacle of, of a, a technological format uh, years ago. And, um, you know, what would that really look like? So, you know, I, I guess when the first couple of people talked about it, uh, I, I was sort of like, you know, why would anybody do that? Why would anybody use this ancient TV as their primary display? And then I, I sort of thought about it for a little bit and, and decided that, since I have access to this thing, because I own this this weird monstrosity uh, of a television, uh, maybe I should give it a shot in that context and, and see really what this thing is like for the uh, variety of media that I consume on a daily basis. Um, what's it going to be like for movies? What's it going to be like for video games? Uh, are, are there any weird gotchas about hooking it up to stuff? And ultimately, does something like this uh, deserve the primary display spot in your house, if you can find one? Uh, what What is that life like? So, you know, let's, let's get into it. First up, let's look at some modern video games. And uh, this is right now uh, running off of a Steam Deck that I have hooked up. I did figure out how to get my Steam Deck to communicate properly with this television. It actually had more to do with the wonkiness of the uh, official Steam Deck than it did the television itself. The television was perfectly happy to accept a 720p signal uh, over um, HDMI uh, into component. And you can see that even though it's, it's 720p being sort of uh, shoehorned into what ends up being 1035i, there are some oddities with how text is displayed. If you've got something like Axiom Verge or any of these games uh, that are more retro focused, uh, it, it works really, really well. Uh, retro games look fantastic when you sort of have that, that bleed off and, and die off of the phosphors. You can sort of see it dragging as uh, we traverse uh, through this door. I, I did realize, unfortunately, that I don't have a, uh, a save with more game uh, finished in it, but hey, you know, here you go. It also uh, works super well with uh, games that have these really, like, just beautifully animated um, sequences in them. Uh, anime in general, you know, no big shock, awesome colors on an old Sony uh, Trinitron, um, so, you know, uh, uh, games like this look really, really nice. Uh, and anything with large enough text works really well. It's not super readable here, but uh, I, I promise uh, in person, those uh, letters are very sharp and games like this are incredibly rewarding to play on a television uh, that can display something at this format. It, it's almost like the sweet spot for modern games uh, that are made in a retro style. And even something um, that's not specifically pixel-based, uh, like we are seeing here, uh, it, it, it really lends a, a, an incredible quality to it. Um, now, you know, the, the Steam Deck, as I was saying, uh, was a little awkward at first to get running, but once everything's calibrated, it's really just a matter of turning it on, uh, going in, and picking the game you want. Um, the menus, because they're designed for the Steam Deck screen, they work relatively well. I, I didn't really have any trouble uh, accessing anything, but you will notice that at the top and the bottom, uh, 
the Steam Deck display and, and most modern uh, game uh, displays are not really made with overscan in mind. And this television really needs to have overscan uh, to work properly. You cannot bring the image to fit uh, perfectly within the dimensions of what's viewable on screen uh, without some oddities, like a, just a little bit of waviness at the corners and stuff. And, and I have calibrated this television, uh, I think, to a relatively high standard. I don't have a, a ton of distortion in any particular spot. But as long as you're willing to live with that uh, overscan, and, and most games do have sort of a safe area that they occupy for the most part, uh, things, you know, work really well. And again, something like Persona with this incredibly uh, beautiful animated intro, it's it's awesome. Uh, it, it really feels like it belongs on a display like this, even though you know we know that it was made for a modern uh, television. Now, when you get into the gameplay of a game like this, again, that overscan starts to sort of be a little strange. You get used to it, uh, but text with a modern game like this is at times a problem. So going back to the Samurai Shodan menu that I showed a little bit earlier in this video, and, and then kind of also looking at the Ghost of Tsushima uh, subtitles, I really found that anything that expects a denser, more modern display um, looks kind of rough. It's really hard to use. Back to Persona, anything that works really well on a portable display uh, or any game that's made probably before 2007-2008, hey, no problem at all. That's going to work really well. You're not going to notice any fringing in the text. And as long as you can deal with the overscan issues in modern games, things are going to run and work just like you'd expect. So it is very much a give and take. I did find myself going back to modern displays for newer games. It is just more enjoyable once you get past the novelty. But let's talk about novelty for a second, because I think one of the most novel things to do with this television is actually display content on it that it was initially designed to have. Uh, if you look what I've got here, this is uh, NHK's um, Japanology series. And I, I love these things. Uh, I They used to have so many more of them up on YouTube. Uh, they switched a lot of them to sort of their in-house in, in app. Um, but they are these awesome videos about just, you know, specific things in Japan, uh, an entire 30 minute episode about them. And I love them so much. This television, uh, the format itself was designed by NHK and the video cameras that are actually recording a lot of the older Japanology stuff, they, they would have basically been designed to uh, display in the high vision format. So there is this, and I know I keep saying this, an intangible quality about watching content designed for this format on it. In the first video, I showed a lot of uh, this interesting high vision uh, demo disc that had been ripped. And NHK stuff, it, it's, it's just as good, it's just as vibrant, it looks absolutely perfect. So why then am I not using this thing as a daily driver? And uh, you probably figured it out already, you just saw me turn on the Yamaha here. Um, in my office, I also have a really uh, uh, curated retro audio stack. Um, I love my records. I uh, love all forms of physical media. Uh, you know, we've, we've got uh, Blu-ray players, we've got DVD players, and a big part of uh, these devices is the audio. And the problem with that audio in this room is that I have limited space and the JBL speakers that I'm using are uh, relatively colossal. Uh, these speakers have massive woofers. They weigh a lot. They have just colossal magnets in them. And that really ends up limiting room placement. These speakers 
just cannot be in a location within this room that is good for sound, but also not going to add any magnetism to the television itself. So that's the unfortunate truth about this setup. And yeah, so yeah, big, big spoiler here. This room, as you see it right there, it, it's not like this anymore. I replaced the high vision with an OLED. I moved the speakers inward so I'm getting really nice, clean, well-calibrated audio out of them. And that's kind of that. But hey, I, I welcome your comments as always. I can't wait to hear how I'm wrong for not sticking it out with this crazy big TV. But for now, back into the garage it goes.